Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the basics of working with cloth in both Blender and also in Maya. This is a requested tutorial Tuesday and it is how do you create cloth in Blender and how easy is it to create cloth in Maya. So I'll go back and forth to simply show how you can create cloth, how you can, you know, constrain certain points if you want to create things like cuttings and all that stuff. And finally, how you can convert these to meshes and how you can use this. Within this period, we're going to talk about a couple of things which you need to know. And from there, we're going to dive right in. The only things that you need to note before you start making cloth in both apps is that first and foremost, if you would start off making cloth, try and make sure that you have the object subdivided. Now, the reason why you need to have this really subdivided is because to each of these points or to each of these vertices, there is going to be some sort of deformation that will be happening. So the less division that it has or the less subdivision that it has, the less you know um deformation that you're going to get so we'll go ahead and look at these things and then you would see these things for yourself so starting off we're going to go ahead and start off with blender and blender directly open here what you can see is the very default stuffs that exist here in blender so let's just simply go right in and first things i would do is kind of delete this cube or i'll just simply leave this cube as it is let's just hide it for now and if you hold down shift and a and go over to mesh you can create a grid now the reason why we're creating a grid is because we want to make use of the subdivision that exists you can still do this in various ways and it will all make sense i'm going to simply increase this by 30 by 30 all right so we're just going to go ahead and increase this 30 by 30 and that would be about it now let's go through and simply take a simple simple look i'm going to jump out of that right now and take a simple look at what the wireframe looks like and you can see that we have a much more dense wireframe next thing i would like to do is to move this up you can decide to click this move button here to move this up or you can do that by holding down shift spacebar and you'll see the options to move these things up so i have this here next thing which you would like to do or which you probably want to do is to have this object selected now because we're going to be in object mode so in case you're in edit mode by pressing tab you can press tab just to jump back to object mode and with that done you need to go over to where we have the deformers or the modifiers all right so with the modifiers there you need to click here and select clot with clot selected the next thing which you need to do is to simply press the playback button and with this playback button happening, you do not see anything working there because we don't have any form of collusion. So for collusion to happen, I'm bringing out this box that we initially hid, okay? So I'm going to bring back this box and switch this from wireframe to shaded. And with that happening directly there, I'm also going to select this object and go over to where I have the physics properties and from this point you can choose to change the physics how you want them to be if you need this clock to collide by itself all those things can be made directly here where you have collusion all right so you can do all of those things there and now once you press the playback button you will still notice that this does not collide because we haven't told the box to be a collusion object and blender has a wonderful way it works blender and maya kind of shares a setting thing together they all have a universal collusion solver all right so once i decide to make this a collider and press the playback button you would notice that this object now deforms and collides and you can see how much we have directly here all right you can see because we do not have enough uh, subdivision that's why we're having all of this sharp and creased looking parts on the model I'm going to go ahead and push this all the way back and then we can see how this works in Maya and when we come back to blender we're going to see how we can pin certain edges and how we can use those edges to drive things like flag cuttings and so on and so forth so with Maya opened here the next thing which we're going to do is do exactly the same thing which we did in blender and that is quite simple we went over here just to simply create the plane and you can also create the plane really easy by holding down the same shift you held in blender but this time once you hold down shift you can right click and select plane and with plane selected 
you can choose to click on this button here or press R on your keyboard to scale this all the way up and I'm going to simply move this all the way up as well. Now we need to add subdivision. Remember in Blender we added a couple of subdivision, I guess 20 by 20. We're going to do the same thing here and there's a shortcut key to that. Once you press T on your keyboard, you can change this from 10 to 20 by 20 and you can see that happening here. Really easy, fun to do and you know quite straightforward. With this selected, you will go over to the FX tab and then you're going to click on this button to actually give this mesh a clot deformer or a clot effect, okay? Or you can simply come through, click over here where you have the FX and it's going to create the FX uh, sub menus where you can come over and go through and say end clot and create a clot solver that will be attached to this mesh. So I'm going to click there and you're going to notice that we now have an end clot solver that is now attached to this mesh. All right, so check out what happens. Exactly the same thing that happens in Blender is also the same result which we're going to get here. So once I press the playback button, you see our object just falls all the way down because there is no collider. And this time, what we want to do is let's just get rid of this particular grid. And with this selected, I'll go back to the end clots directly here and make this a passive collider so it's going to be a collider exactly the same way we had a collider in blender so clicking on that stuff now and press the playback button and you can see what we have similar to what we have in blender that is exactly the kind of results that we are getting here you're noticing that all this parts are also creased and looking quite sharp because we do not have enough subdivision attached to them. So for you to get a much more cleaner geometry, you need to have subdivisions for these things. All right. You need to have subdivisions. So the next thing which I'm going to show you guys or the next requested thing for this tutorial is how do you pin these things? So for example, you want to create a cloth that's hanging a flag, something like that. How do you go ahead and pin this stuff? So I will show you how you can do that. So let's jump back into Blender and take a very quick look. So with Blender open here, you can see that we have this incredible, let's play this back one more time. And you can see that we have this very lovely, lovely animation happening there. Now the next thing which you want to do is you would want to press the tab key so that you can jump through and go into the edit mode. So with edit mode open here, I would like to select a couple of points. So I'm selecting these ones and I'm also going to select something like this. And with this point selected, the next thing which I want to do is to go directly here where I have the object data. So clicking on the object data, I want to actually group these vertices and assign them more like a set. And I will use this set group to drive what I want. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just come over here and press the plus button and you can see this particular group here. And I would like to assign these selected vertices over to this group. So I'm going to click on assign and have that there. Now with this done, I can go back and simply press the tab key one more time just to jump out of the edit mode. All right. So with that done, I'll go to this physics tab and make sure that I have everything set the way it was in the beginning, which is just having the clock working for me directly there. And with that done, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the part where I have called shape. I would like to assign a certain group to be pinned. So I'm going to click on this button and click on group. So with group selected, you would notice that once I go back and play back this animation, so let's just do that one more time. And so you can see our object is pinned from this point. So from this point onwards, we can also come through. So I'm just going to select this directly here. Let's go all the way back. All right. So I'm just going to go all the way back to this point and press the playback button. I can go through and simply move this around and use it to interact with this mesh the way it is. So how do you actually convert this object as it is to mesh? And how do you save this? Before we talk about how you can convert this object to mesh, it's nice to actually take a simple look at how you can redo something like this in Maya. So we're going to open Maya here and we have our animation that was playing back earlier. So I'm just going to play this back one more time so you can see. And we're going to do exactly the same thing which we did in Blender, which is simply selecting the object, going over to vertices, select the setting or the vertices which you want. So I'm going to select four by four vertices. And for Maya, you need to click on end constraint. All right. 
so you need to simply click on end constraint and you have to go all the way down all right so we just have to go all the way down and click on transform constraint so with the transform constraint selected if we just simply press the playback button you will see that we're having exactly the same result and if you want to interact with the model at the point where this model is playing you may need to use this interactive playback button so let's go ahead and press that button and at this point we can now interact with the model as much as we want all right so at this point we can now go ahead and interact with the model as much as we want if you if you simply use the playback button directly here nothing would happen but if you want to you know play back and interact with the model then of course you need to use the interactive playback to get these things to work all right, so now that we've seen how this works here in Maya, let's go back to Blender and see how you can convert this object or convert this clot to an object. And it's fairly, fairly simple. All right. So for you to be able to convert whatever you've done, because you don't do this simulation over and over again, let's say you're creating a cutting or something at the point you are done with the cutting and you just want to get over with it and just make it the mesh. How you can simply do this is by simply hitting apply. So with apply done, you do not have any form of animation stored on this geometry anymore. All right. So you can go ahead, press the playback button and you just have a mesh the way it is. So with this now, you can click on the modify, go over to where you have subdivision and you can increase the subdivision count as much as you want and simply hit apply. Every other thing that you would like to do from here onwards is either re-simulate this the way you want it to be or you can go ahead and sculpt extra details directly here. Now we're done with this, we can simply press the delete button to get rid of that cube and now we have our mesh or our clot here and we can use this for anything that we want let's see how that works in maya in maya this works slightly the same so i'm just going to press the playback button one more time let's just position this cube a little bit inwards and press play so with play done what you're going to notice is let's position this just that point so let's press the playback button one more time and press that to stop so with this done if we want to convert this to an object you can choose to make a copy and automatically it's going to make that an object or you can go over to edit come down to this part where you have delete by type and you can totally delete the history all right so once we do this we no longer have this object as it is all right this object no longer exists as a clot it is now a mesh and we can now use this mesh for whatever we want if for some reason you're working in Maya and you get to select all of these things press delete and you notice that you're having this geometry here what you can do is just simply double click on all of them press delete and uh, to get rid of them you might also be able to find this very annoying small uh, object here select all of them by using the edge and delete that with this done, you'll be able to just simply have a mesh like this. And let's go ahead and delete the history one more time. And this is it. And if you're wondering why do you delete history in Maya, Maya understands deleting history as you applying everything that you've worked on before that makes up that mesh as a piece. So in Blender, you hit the word apply on a modifier to actually bake that modifier into the mesh. In Maya, you delete history to bake everything that you've worked on together to bake those, you know, those processes or those changes to the mesh. Also, one more thing which you need to know about Maya when you're working with clot is Maya by default, when you decide to add clot, you can have presets. And I mean presets, presets that you can use to actually make your work way more faster or easier. So for example, if I just simply have this object here and I'm going to simply position this directly to a point like this. So let's just go ahead and scale this all the way up. And I choose to add a clot to this. So I'm going to add clot to this object, select this other one and make it a collider. Within this part that I have this set to clot, I can choose what kind of clot I want this to be. So if I want it to be a potty, I can have that there and press the playback button. And you're going to notice 
how this deforms so to whatever property that you want to give this object at any point in time let's just simply move this over to this part all right so to whatever property that you want to give to this object at any point in time you have presets that can help you get these things done faster so if you want to make this a simple concrete you can totally replace this entire thing and it's going to become fully fully concrete and you can see that there is just but a slight deformation at the edge all right if you want to go ahead and make this a complete cutting or maybe total uh or totally a lava or honey something like that you can still do this and replace that entirely there and this is pretty nice because it's going to simply give you a head start for whatever thing that you want to create let's increase this timeline a bit so that we can get way more deformations happening here we can also choose to increase this timeline by just simply pressing an extra zero directly there and increase this all the way to the end also in blender you can also trigger the cloth modifier by selecting an object and going over to this part called cloth and clicking on cloth and then you have automatically attached that modifier here so within the physics tab once you add cloth here you've automatically attached this to the object and i'm going to simply select this other one and add collusion and once we press the playback button as well you would notice that we're beginning to have this thing here. It's also worth mentioning that all of the properties that you need to actually, you know, manipulate your cloth exist directly here where you have the physics. So if you want to play with the stiffness, if you want to play with the uh, bounciness, the damping, you want to play with how this thing shrinks or how the collusion actually works, you can come through and make those changes directly here. All right. So these are ways that you can work with cloth. And I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section. If you're excited about this and you want to see me do more videos about cloth, for example, how you can tier one, how you can attach these things to characters and probably how you can work be, be, with both maya and blender when it comes to cloth how you can sew them together i would like to know about these things in the comment section below and if you want to learn more about cloth link is also going to be in the description to an amazing page called zarif where you can learn how to work with marvelous designer and you know create amazing and fantastic stuff and if you like this video you know what to do hit the like button and also turn on notification and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update review free friday tips and tricks things like this Peace.